मसाज मसाज एंड कॉम्प्रेशन स्टॉकिंग्स क्लियर सो दीज आर द कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ बेस्कार्स रेजीम यूज फॉर वीनस अल्सर्स Now we are going to discuss venous ulcers. Venous ulcers and venous ulcers are responsible for 60 to 70 percent of ulcers in the lower limb. And see, if there is ulcer in the patient of varicose vein, that is known as varicose ulcer. So venous ulcers, these are responsible for 60 to 70 percent ulcers in the lower limb. and in varicose veins whenever there is ulcer this is known as varicose ulcer we discussed that what is the theory which is leading to varicose ulcer initially two theories were there fibrin cuff theory and wbc migration theory initially it was said that fibrin cuff theory and wbc migration theory wbc migration theory these are responsible for formation of varicose ulcer but these theories are not accepted nowadays it is said that it's the chronic ambulatory venous hypertension it's the chronic ambulatory venous hypertension which is responsible for the ulceration okay so now see how the ulcer looks like how the lower limb looks like in the varicose vein So if you see the appearance of lower limb in the varicose vein it looks like inverted champagne bottle appearance so in patients of varicose vein the lower limb it looks like inverted champagne bottle appearance clear and see how venous or varicose ulcer looks like see this is the appearance of varicose ulcer now what you can see you can see that there is granulation tissue pink granulation tissue in the floor what is the location of this ulcer if you see this is the medial malleolus here so this is the medial malleolus and this is the calf okay so the region between medial malleolus and calf this region is known as gaiter's region so the region between medial malleolus and the calf is known as gaiter's region and varicose ulcers are usually located in the gaiter's region what is the typical location just above medial malleolus now what else you can see you can see in the floor there is pink granulation tissue you can see that there is sloping edges so in healing ulcers there is sloping edges and what else there is hyperpigmentation of skin around the ulcer so this is varicose ulcer or venous ulcer so what is the characteristic of this ulcer this is venous ulcer and the characteristic you can see it is located in the gaiter's region location gaiter's region there is pink granulation tissue in the floor pink granulation tissue in the floor and there is hyperpigmentation of skin around the ulcer okay and most important what kind of edges in healing ulcers or in varicose ulcer there is presence of sloping edges sloping edges okay how you differentiate it from arterial ulcers or what are the features of arterial ulcers see So here you can see this is arterial ulcer. Can you see it is punched out? And can you see the skin is thin and shiny? And what else you can see that there is amputation in one of the digit or one of the toe? And what else can you see there are brittle nails? So these are suggestive of ischemia, arterial occlusion. So this is arterial ulcer. And what is the appearance of this arterial ulcer? It is punched out. there are signs of ischemia so what there is thin shiny skin thin shiny skin what else you can find you can see brittle nails 
so there is presence of brittle nails and what else you can notice that there is no hair so what loss of hair and in this case can you see here yes number of hairs you can see here so these are the differences between venous ulcers and arterial ulcers how we manage varicose ulcers or venous ulcers we discussed we manage it by Visgars regime and what are the components of Visgars regime limb elevation massage and compression stockings so management we are using Visgars regime and what are the components of Visgars regime limb elevation massage massage and compression stockings clear so these are the components of biscards regime used for venous ulcers